everyone, welcome to the Jaden Stitches Show. Grab yourself a cup of coffee. I picked up some cotton yarn this week at a discount store. Love those. Stepped in, went straight to the craft aisle. It's where I always go. And I was delighted to see that they actually had some yarn. They had brand name yarn, which was even cooler. It This is all Burnett Handicrafter. This is not a sponsored video. I find Burnett Handicrafter is the cotton yarn that is usually available to me. I live in Canada um, and they make a lot of it here. This is dishcloth yarn. I have been on a dishcloth kick lately and I feel like there's still some more to come. The long weekend is coming and in a recent live stream we noticed that a lot of you were kind of, you know, lamenting the fact that your crojo has kind of escaped you and I feel like there could be a whole bunch of reasons for that. But when I feel like I still want to make something but I just don't know what, I like to sit and make a dishcloth. They're always useful. You can give them as gifts. You can use them yourself. They never go out of style. And there's just an unending number of ways to make them. And the more pretty colors you have in your crochet cotton uh, basket, the more fun you can have making dishcloths. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to look at all of these different colors. I'm going to tell you what they named them. I'm going to tell you what I think they should have named them. <laughs> um, and if you have sort of a, an image or one sort of speaks to you or you have an idea or something, Leave it in the comment section down below. Um, I am always looking for fun new ideas to turn into cotton dishcloths or even coasters. I mean, this is that cotton that is good for scrubbies. Like if you want to do a washcloth um, in the, the shower or something, or if you want to make a little pot scrubber, a dishcloth, a washcloth, a face scrubby. Uh, this is the yarn for that. It's workhorse cotton. It's not pretty cotton, but the colors are nice. So here we go. I think I'm going to start off with the solids. I got um, some neutrals. This is what they call black licorice, black yarn. It's black, not a lot to say about that. It's, I love black. I never seem to be able to find black yarn, especially black cotton. I can find black yarn, black cotton. Either they don't make much of it, probably because it's expensive to make. I would assume that the black dye is kind of expensive. Um, and this is a really nice, rich black. There's no like mottling in it. Uh, black licorice. It is black licorice colored, actually. I think that's a good good name for it. But um, I, I love black cotton because I love to outline imagery sometimes. Maybe I just want um, to sort of make another color really stand out. And black is really dramatic. So I love black cotton. I feel like I never get to see it. So I was very excited when I found a ball of it. Uh, each of these balls of yarn are... 50 grams, the ones that are self-striping or variegated are 42 and a half grams because they always put a little less yarn in a skein if it's a self-striping or a multicolored uh, yarn, just because it's more expensive, which I think is kind of too bad, but at least you're not, you know, paying them. It would be complicated, I think, if you got the same amount but had to pay a little bit more for it. Maybe that's why they do it. Anyway, uh, there's a difference. So 42 and a half grams for the multicolored balls, 50 grams for the uh, solid balls, or um, this is a 1.75 ounce ball. There's 77 meters or 84 yards in a regular solid color ball of this Handicrafter yarn. Uh, and it's all 100% cotton, size 4, medium weight. So it's all the same yarn, it's just the color that changes. This is black licorice. Super stoked that I have a ball of black cotton in my collection again. I have some ideas for that. And this will most likely be used as outline or framing or that kind of, that's how I would use the black. I wouldn't make an entire dishcloth necessarily all in black. I say that and then I just realized that an all black dishcloth for Halloween might be kind of nice. Also, an all black dishcloth isn't going to show staining very quickly. You know what? Make an all black dishcloth. <laughs> Um, I will say I've had two colors in the dye lot system of the Burnett Handicrafter that sometimes tend to run if I don't wash them a couple times before use. And that was the a dark blue and a dark red. I I don't think I've had any experience with the black in this line yet. Because it's such a strong color, I would treat it like a strong color. I would wash it a couple times first, or if I'm giving this as a gift, like if I'm making a dishcloth and giving it away, I would recommend washing it a couple times before using it, just so the color has a chance to kind of get it out of its system. But having said that, the colors that I have found in this line of yarn um, that do run a little bit, it's not like it hurts the overall color of the yarn. After it kind of gets that initial wash out of its system, 
the color is pretty strong and it stays. Um, like I said, it's real workhorse yarn. So I would treat the black the same way. I'm going to assume there will be a little bit of running. So I would wash it before using it in the sink. That's with the dark stuff. Okay, so that was that. In terms of other neutrals, I have about two of these because I use a ton of white, off-white, all the light neutrals when I'm doing just about anything, but um, it's it's like the reverse of the black. So while the black is great for outlining and framing and it's dramatic, this is also great for outlining and framing, but it's less dramatic. It's more cartoony almost, or it lightens things. So while black creates like drama and definition, um, white or off-white yarns are a great way to just add a little bit of lightness to your project um, and maybe add in a different color that doesn't clash with anything. These are both off-white. So that is what they call them. That is very aptly named. They are definitely off-white. I would also have said maybe Acru. Like these have a little bit of eggshell in them, I feel, like in terms of of just the kind of, like they're a warmer white. They're not a bright white. They're not a blue white. They're not a true white. They're definitely off-white. Uh, and I got two of them, so it's a good neutral. I probably should have picked up three, now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> These are also the 50 grams because they're a solid color. All right. Um, interestingly, uh, I grabbed a bunch of yarn, and then when I got home, I realized what colors I had picked up. So I picked up a bunch of, like, self-striping and a couple of variegated because I really like those. Those are fun. They're like They're like little bits of candy. They're fun to make... They're fun to practice a stitch with. So they it's less about the yarn and more about the stitch, but it still makes the dishcloth kind of fun. Uh, but I picked up a bunch of solid colors and I just realized that they're all a shade of blue. <laughs> so I have four solid shades here, but they're all kind of a shade of blue, which is fine because obviously I use a lot of blue, but here we go. This is the first one. This one they called Mod Blue. I think I would have called this Aqua. If you wanted something interesting, maybe Peacock Aqua, uh, Turquoise even. This might be more Turquoise than Aqua, uh, but Mod Blue they went with. Okay, fine. Um, I really like this. It's a really solid, cheerful blue color. Uh, it's definitely on the Aqua side of blue, and I will show you all of these together in a moment just so you can sort of see how different they are, but uh, I really like that. That is a, that's a, an Aqua color that I, I will reach for an Aqua all the time. I feel like it's a happy color, it's a bright color, it 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 goes with a lot of other things. You can almost use this as a neutral sometimes um, because it's, it's just so bright and cheerful, so I use a lot of that. Probably should have picked up a couple balls of it. This is a lighter version of that. Um, this one they called Robin's Egg. All right, I feel like a Robin's Egg might be a little bluer than this, but that is definitely in the same sort of concept of the same shade range. Uh, that is a nice light aqua, a very, very light aqua, or a very, very light turquoise, probably more turquoise than aqua. I feel like aqua has a little more green in it. So this is a light, light turquoise, and that's them together. So what I would call turquoise, what they called mod blue, and what I would call light turquoise, <laughs> uh, what they called, what did I say this was? Robin's egg. So that's what they, they made robin's egg, or called robin's egg. So those are my two turquoises. One's kind of dark, one's kind of on the light side, and I'm going to show you those with these ones. These are now true blues, so I've got a dark blue. This one they called blueberry. Would you call that blueberry? I don't feel like that's blueberry. Blueberry to me is a lot darker. It's a richer, darker blue. So I, I wouldn't have called that blueberry. That's kind of like cartoon blueberry or food coloring blueberry. <laughs> um, it's still a very pretty blue, uh, however, and it's a solid blue. It's a real true blue. It's not like, and it's, it's nice to have a strong blue that isn't super dark, like a navy blue or a cobalt, um, because uh, if I want to do something, say, and I show it on camera and I want to use a nice solid blue, um, this one you'll be able to see my stitches because it's not too dark, but it's still a really rich blue, so I really like that one. Um, blueberry, they called it. Okay, and then a lighter version of that, which has almost got more of a chalkiness to it. Like, I would, I would call this a chalky blue, uh, and they call it French blue. French blue. So, does that look like French blue to you? 
And why, I wonder, do they call it French blue? When I think of a French blue, like I think of like that yellow, blue, white combination that you would see like in a classic kitchen or maybe um, blue on pottery. I feel like that's a bit darker, but again, very pretty color. This might be skating into that category of porcelain. Um, what's it called? I think it starts with a W. It's a really, really pretty blue porcelain with all the white. Um, but this is definitely has a chalky undertone to it. So this is a lighter blue. It's kind of chalky. I still really like it because it's a lighter blue, but it's not quite like a pastel. That's what these two look together uh, like. So you've got blueberry and um, French blue or just like a nice strong blue and then the lighter version. I feel like those are definitely in the same palette. There's definitely like a lighter, I think they took this and they lightened it. So I like those two together for that. And here's what they look like with the other blues. Um, so darks on the bottom, lights on the top, true blue and a much greener blue. Uh, what I would call turquoise or aqua over here and the more true blue over here. So I like those four together. Very pretty. Um, I hope that the lighting is doing a good job of showing you that. Okay, let's do some variegated now. All right, this is Pinky Stripes. All of the lighter weight, uh, all I should say all of the, the multicolored balls of yarn are less yarn per skein. So these are 42 and a half grams or one and a half ounces, 71 yards or 65 meters. So there's, what's the regular yardage in one of these? So 84 yards versus 71 yards. So that's quite a bit less, uh, but it's probably more expensive to, uh, to make multicolored balls of yarn. So I'll give them that. <laughs> this is what they call pinky stripes. I'll take it. It's definitely pink. We've got um, white, Strong pink, light pink, like a bubblegum pink in the middle. But then in some of the white stretches, you've got little blotches of pink, which I think is really cute. Um, it does make me think of candy. This makes me think of pulled bubblegum. Like if you're chewing a big old wad of that pink bubblegum and then you like stretch it out, all of those colors wind up in this ball of yarn. So instead of calling it pinky stripes, which probably is a little more palatable than calling it stretched bubblegum, <laughs> I think I would still call this like, I'd want to call this bubble gum or, uh, you know, blowing, blowing bubble gum bubbles or bubble stretch bubble gum, because that's kind of what it makes me think of. But I really like all the pinks in that, all that pink and white. Very, very pretty. So that's variegated ball number one, technically self-striping. Here's another self-striping ball. They called this one purple perk ombre. Purple, per purple perk ombre. Mm, okay. There's some purple in this but it's mostly other colors. So there's pink, there's a kind of a periwinkle blue, there's a lighter version of it, a darker version of it, and then white. So there's less purple in this than there are the other colors. I still like it, self-striping. Um, the French for this is vision de violet, violet ombre. So a violet vision ombre, or a, vi a vision in violet which I still don't think. So purple perk or a vision in violet, violet. And then the Spanish is morado magic, magico mat, matiza, matizado, mat, matizado, excuse me. I don't speak Spanish. Morado magico. Well, I see the word magic in there. So anyone who speaks Spanish, if you want to quickly try and figure out what I just said, but I see the word magic in there. So it, basically you've got three completely different names in those different languages. And I'm not so sure that any of them really fit that. I, I don't really know what this says to me. Purple perk, perky purple. I think I might've said, I'm not sure what I would have said. Okay. I'll give you that one, Bernadette. <laughs> purple perk ombre. This doesn't really st strike me like a true ombre though, because we're not really going through shades of purple uh, down to white. You're going through purple and blue and pink and then white. So I don't know. Uh, purple, purple, I'm glad there's purple in it. I love having purple yarn, uh, but I don't know that I would have really ref 
referenced the purple 100%. I'm curious, do you look at that and see purple? Do you look at that and see pink? Do you feel like you're seeing shades of purple? Maybe it's just me. Um, still learning to like it though. I like the self-striping stuff. So there we go, that's that. Uh, another one we've got, this one is more of a variegated. This one they called Summer Print. I like that. So this is a primarily white bowl. There are little tiny splotches of, of a, a green, like a really fresh green, a fresh yellow, and two shades of blue, a darker blue and a lighter blue, which does feel very fresh. Feels very summery, light, you know, you kind of feel like you're watching clouds pass by. So I kind of like the name of this one, Summer Print. Um, and I like how it's mostly white with just little blotches of color. I feel like this in particular would make a really nice dishcloth where you were practicing something super repetitive, like the V-stitch or single crochet, half double crochet, something super basic. This would really make it look cute because you'd have little blotches of that pretty light, lifted, summery color in a mostly white dishcloth. Um, so I really like this one. This one really attracted me. So that, summer print, I like it. But what would you call it? Would you call it summer print? Would you call it summer sky, maybe? Cloud watching? Yeah, I might call it cloud watching. <laughs> okay. This one is also back to striping. So this is a self-striping yarn. And they called this one lemon swirl. All right. I also would have accepted lemon meringue because I feel like this looks a little bit more like Lemon meringue, like the baby blanket we just made. Um, they've got strong yellow and white, and then whatever kind of brings you down sort of in between. So you've got strong yellow tapers to a softer yellow to white, soft yellow, strong yellow. I love that. I love it when a self-striping yarn is just like two or three colors and they just, they just all kind of just keep gradually moving into each other. So lemon swirl for this one. I'm okay with that. Um, I really like just the simplicity of the yellow and the white in this ball of yarn. Now, having said that, I have one in my lap here. I'm gonna hold this back and I'm gonna show it to you again. This one is essentially the exact same concept. It is orange and white. You have a really strong orange, it goes to a gentler orange, and it goes into sort of an off-white. Really pretty. Makes me think of like a creamsicle. Um, they called this Poppy. Poppy, okay. I know some poppies to be that really strong orange that's in here, but I don't think of those poppies as also having a lot of white in them. I also think of the word poppy as meaning like fun and bouncy and perky, you know, poppy. So that might have also been kind of what they're going for. But here's what I'm thinking. Because it's the same color concept, so it's almost like they programmed the machine, like this one with yellow, this one with orange, but the same program. Go strong with the color, lighter with the color to white, and then gentler with the color, and then back to the strong color. They did the same thing with the orange. Strong orange, lighter orange, white, lighter orange, strong orange, repeat. I like that they called this one lemon swirl. Why didn't they just call this one orange swirl? Lemon swirl, orange swirl. I would have done that. In fact, I would have done all the fruits. I would have done blueberry swirl. I would have done pink grapefruit swirl, I would have done strawberry swirl, I would have done watermelon swirl, that one could have been, that one could be really pretty. That could be red and green with little tiny blotches of black. That would be really great. I would do all the swirls, Bernat, <laughs> and I would buy all the swirls. Look at me giving you free advice. Um, this lemon swirl, sure. Poppy, I wouldn't have named it Poppy. I would have named it Orange Swirl. I would have done a series of swirls because I think it's the same kind of concept. So you get that there's sort of a theme going with the coloration of this yarn. Now, having said that, I haven't actually stitched anything up with either of these, but just from looking at them, I'm guessing that they're gonna kind of play out similarly. So, you know, Lemon Swirl, Orange Swirl, I would have called them that. What would you have called them? Would you have done that? Would you have called them something else? I don't know, I really like these. Anyway. Um, so that is five little balls of the self-striping or variegated yarns, and each of those are 42 and a half grams or like 71 yards. I got three neutrals, so two in the off-white, one in black licorice. Really excited to have the black. And then thinking that I'd gotten a bunch more colors, I really only got four blue. <laughs> now they're all different, and that's great because I love lots of blues and I love turquoises, and I think... 
I think I am often reaching for a shade of blue that really kind of says what I want it to, either like, oh, I'm thinking water, or I'm thinking sky, or I'm just thinking of a nice fresh blue to be like the other color. So happy to have these. Uh, but it's really funny because I was I got all the way home and sort of looked at all my yarn and I thought, wait a minute, I thought I'd bought a bunch of different colors. Like I was sure I was looking at like pinks and corals and apparently all I did was get blue. So <laughs> Brain shuts off when I see yarn and I just start grabbing and putting them in my arms. But uh, a nice little haul, which is great because I was starting to deplete a lot of the colors in my workhorse cotton stash. I call it my workhorse cotton stash because I make things that are meant to work with it. And um, it holds up. It's good yarn for that. Good for market bags, good for dishcloths or any kind of scrub cloth kind of thing. And I will be making some more of those. In fact, we've got quite the extensive list of dishcloths. I'll link those, um, the, the whole playlist in the description box down below. So if you're in the mood to make something, but you don't know what to make, you know, you know, maybe your Crojo is kind of like went and sat on the shelf or something, uh, make a dishcloth. Useful, makes a quick little gift. And if you don't have a reason to give it at, you know, right off the bat, put it in your make-ahead stash. This is a great time of year to start just, you know, prepping that make-ahead stash. It's that little box or bag or closet or whatever where you make things and put them away to be used as gifts. They're, they make great last minute gifts. There is always something coming up in our lives where, oh, I should, you know, bring a little something. Sometimes you forget about an upcoming event, uh, or sometimes you just want to have a little something extra to add to a gift that you've already got. Or maybe you just want to perk somebody's day up. I mean, that's what we're here for, right? We're here to sort of make each other feel a little bit better when we need it. Um, the yarn makes a nice dishcloth. Dishcloth makes a nice gift for a friend. Friend feels appreciated. Everybody wins. <laughs> anyway, um, let me have a sip of my coffee. I hope you enjoyed that little uh, wander through some some yarn colors. Maybe got some ideas for dish claws. We'll link our playlist down below and um, we will see you guys soon here on the Jaden's Stitches Show. Till then, stay safe, stay crafty, try a dish cloth out and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye guys. Hi everybody, Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.